Hello everyone, this is Adrian Bell, and in today's video we will learn about the mysterious case of Kanei Mosamet, a 15-year-old Bengali girl that had moved to Italy with her family at the age of 10, looking for a better future for her and her siblings. Unfortunately, they had no idea what was in store for them. Despite the fact that she was so young, Kamei Mosamet had a long history of poverty, uncertainty and too much responsibility being put on her shoulders. Kamei's mother and siblings actually moved to Italy to be reunited with her father, who spent most of his time working hard in a factory, trying to support his family while struggling with an alcohol problem. Kamei had a lot of responsibilities for her child. She took care of her siblings, taking them to school, looking after them all the time and communicating on behalf of her mother, who didn't know how to read or write in either Italian or her native language. With all of it, Kamei was always trying to find a little time to be a kid. Kamei was a very intelligent girl and learned Italian very fast, which helped her to adapt and better survive in the city of Ancona, Italy. As the years went by, growing up as an immigrant, Kamei faced many hardships with her family, struggling daily to survive. At her Italian school, a teacher, Silvia Mainardi, an Italian citizen who was worried for Kamei and her family, often took her and her siblings to have dinner and stay at her house when it was possible, as the teacher herself had the children. Silvia also helped Kamei's deaf-mute brother by teaching him sign language and took the kids to doctor's appointments. Obviously, with all the help she provided, she ended up very close to the family. At the age of 15, Kamei dreamed of a different life, but she was always stuck with the responsibility of being like a second mother to her younger siblings. Things got even worse when her father got lung cancer and due to the health condition, he ended up losing his job at the factory. Unfortunately, this caused him to have an even harder time taking care of his family and he fell behind on his rent payments. One day at school, Kamei was told by two child services officials that they had lost their family home and she needed to come with them because they were taking her to a small place that was being provided for her, her mother and her younger siblings. While her elder brother and father would sadly be left homeless, that very same day her father, according to witnesses, was seen throwing up constantly due to cancer treatments. Can you imagine how a 15-year-old girl would feel in such a dire situation? It's heartbreaking. Not only was her father facing cancer and homelessness with her older brother, but also all the very few things they did have were taken from them. Her teacher, Silvia, when hearing about what happened, started asking everyone she knew for donations. She explained the situation of Kamei's father and the family to them. And fortunately, through the generosity of many kind people, they were able to gather enough money to provide him and his older son a place close to his wife and children. People at Kamei's school said that she seemed embarrassed about the situation. Not only was she unable to have a normal life like any other kid her age, but the entire situation had become common knowledge to everyone she knew. With everything she was going through, Kamei tried to be responsible and helpful, but Kamei was still a teenager and wanted to live her own life and follow her own dreams. But on May 29th, 2010, everything changed. On the morning of May 30th, Kamei's father, Ibrahim Osamet, went to her school asking for help, saying that his daughter hadn't come home the night before. Elisabetta Micciarelli, the headmistress of the school, went to the police station with Kamei's father in order to help him with everything she could. 
Camille's teacher, Silvia Mainardi, also tried to make sure that the authorities and the community would do everything possible to find the teenager, calling not only the police, but also the media and talking to everyone who would have had any information about Kamei. At first, the police suspected that Kamei had run away as her life was so difficult. They assumed that maybe she tried to find a better life far away from there. Also, they wondered if her Bengali parents sent her back to Bangladesh as she was living as a modern Western girl and it was frowned upon their religion and culture. But the family totally refuted this theory, knowing they didn't send her back, and went directly to the media, appealing for anyone who knew anything about the disappearance of Kamei to come forward. During the investigation, Kamei's teachers found out that she had a journal among her school books, in which she wrote mostly in Italian. They gave it to the police. In her journal, they discovered that she had detailed how in love she was with a 20-year-old man named Monir Kazi. When they started to investigate him, the police found a photo of Kazi and Kamei kissing on the old social media MySpace. Kazi was also Bengali, living in Italy at the famous Hotel House, a place that once was a fancy hotel with an amazing view of the sea. But now the hotel was abandoned and had become the home of low-income Italians and foreigners. In their investigation of the hotel, the police found footage of the CCTV cameras. In that footage, they saw that Kamei entered the hotel on May 29th, the day of her disappearance, but never left. The police also found that there was blood on Kazi's pillow, but its origin was unclear, as it didn't match Kamei's DNA. Also, in the day of her disappearance, Kazi created an alibi by going to a local hospital and complaining of stomach cramps. The police were left with little evidence to indict the man as a suspect. Mysteriously, Kazi suddenly left Italy to go to Greece, but the police didn't extradite him as they didn't feel they had enough evidence against him. A few Italian newspapers spoke about the case and there was also a small amount of coverage on the famous Italian TV missing persons show Chila Visto, asking for any information about Kamei. Two months after Kamei's disappearance, her father died due to lung cancer and a broken heart. As the time passed, the case went cold, and at that moment, her disappearance was no longer being covered by the media. <music> But the story wasn't over yet. Eight years later, on March 28, 2018, police officers were searching the ground around an abandoned drug house, looking for stashes of drugs or money, because they knew the house was being used by dealers. A police officer saw something that looked like a golf ball sticking out of the ground. He approached it curiously and noticed that it was actually the rounded part of a femur bone belonging to a human. He immediately called forensics. When they arrived, they dug about two meters deep in the area. It was a disturbing moment as everyone were trying to understand how human remains would be hidden underneath a place where people normally dumped their trash. Due to the proximity of the area where the remains were found to the last place where Kamei was seen alive, the police tested her DNA against the remains. Unfortunately, those remains were hers. Kamei's body had finally been found, but because it had been so long, forensics couldn't even determine the cause of death. Monir Kazi was the prime suspect of the case for child abduction, murder and concealment of a corpse. He had come back to Italy between the time of death and the discovery of Kamei's body, but he left Italy again and disappeared. Nobody knows where Monir Kazi is. The chief prosecutor of the Republic and the notice of conclusion of investigations indicated Monir as the author of an aggravated voluntary murder and concealment of a corpse, but the case ended up going cold. 
Kamei's teacher, Sylvia, said in an interview to The Guardian that the case of Kamei was forgotten because she didn't get enough attention and support from the media and the population, as usually white Italian girls did in such crimes. There were also articles from Italian journalists comparing her case with Sari Scati's case, saying that even though they were the same age and disappeared at around the same time, Kamei's mother, Fatima, didn't get half of the support Sara's mother did. By the way, I came across this case when I was researching Sari Scati's case, which is the last video that I made for you guys. What we do know is... Kamei was a good kid that helped her family in every way she could. She fell in love with a man and the last time she was ever seen alive was entering his building. Eight years later, her remains were found at a dump close to the building he was living in. What really happened to Kamei Mosamet? Did Monir Kazi lure her to his place? and do something horrible to her, then kill, dismember, and bury her nearby? Did someone else help him with the crime? Was it related to that abandoned drug house? Whoever killed Kamei got away with this horrific crime, and we may never know the truth about what really happened to her. If you have any information about this case, or the location of Monarchazi, Please contact the Italian authorities using the link below. Kamei Mosamet and her family deserve justice. Thanks for watching.